Hi, everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, our next ILC Disrupting Claims interview. Uh, we're absolutely thrilled to have Christine Matthews with us today, who is the uh, head of claims at Bought by Many. Uh, we're thrilled for a number of reasons. It's the first time at ILC we've explored the world of pet claims, um, but actually more so because we've managed to persuade Christine to, to come to talk to us about Bought by Many because um, they really have taken the pet insurance world by storm and are also are changing the shape of, of personal lines insurance in, in mine and many other people's views. Um, I think personal lines ins and, and pet insurance particularly, but personal lines insurance generally has been, as far as claims is concerned, a, a kind of a, a, a price and sales led thing um, and claims has been damage limitation, whereas bought by many are very much making it a customer and service led proposition. And so I think there's a huge amount we can learn from what these very clever guys are doing. Um, <laughs> And actually, I did notice that at the back end of last week, Chris, Christine, that you guys won the Best Pet Insurer uh, Insurance Choice Awards. So um, uh, the, the recognition's coming coming thick and fast. Um, and we got the Innovation Award as well, so. Oh, well, perfect. Absolutely <laughs> perfect. The, 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 the right arena for us to be talking in terms of claims tech and, and, and new thinking as well, then. Brilliant. Um, I guess you've had a long career. I'll stop talking very quickly in a yeah. second. But you've had a long career um, and an eminent career in, in insurance claims with some big jobs at some big companies. What, what attracted you to Bought by Many and what's impressed you most about, about the business since you joined them? Yeah. Okay. So, hi, everyone. I'm not sure I like the bit where you go and emphasize long too many <laughs> times, there, Stuart. Um, but anyway, yes, I've done uh, over 30 years um, in claims, all personal lines. Um, and I think probably two main sort of big corporates, um, very different than bought by many. And I think... Um, when I first started looking, I was looking for something that was different than the corporate um, and bought by many most definitely is. So some of the, the uh, big corporates I've worked for, they, we talk about being customer centric all the time, but actually um, our main sort of discussion topics are always loss ratios and OPEX, not really the customer. Sometimes the customer just used to come in at the end of the meeting if you had to, a few minutes spare. So it was quite different. And um, when I started uh, looking at Bought by Many, they really had truly different um, customer statements. And I've been with uh, Bought by Many for just over two years now, and it's all true. It truly is a different customer-centric uh, company. So <laughs> we still look at loss ratios, we still look at OPEX, but nowhere near to the level as other companies that I work for. It's real... Um, it's all about customers. It's all about trying to understand and help them when they really need um, what they bought their insurance for, really, just to deliver that customer promise. Um, and we're always looking for ways of trying to improve that customer journey. We try to reduce our declinitures. Um, we sort of really listen. We get a lot of customer feedback and we adapt and change the um, sort of policy covers where we can. And uh, being at Book by Many means, one, you talk about customer an awful lot, and two, you can quickly change it. So if something's not liked, and um, we know that customers change their expectations quite regularly, um, we can move quite fast with that as well. So it's been fantastic, yeah. So the one thing I, I picked up there, Christine, was we're trying to reduce our declinitures, which I guess it's not, um, uh, it's, it's not something that you... Yeah readily hear at being at the heart of someone's culture how, how, how does that play out what, what's that all about yeah so it is about um we look at um where we decline claims want from a customer point of view um the sort of things that they're really looking for within cover so you know we don't really limit um some's insured to minuscule amounts that don't cover the majority of um ailments we looked um so you look at some of the policies and especially in pet, they're absolutely full of exclusions and conditions, things like, you know, you have to have a microchip on your pet. And some, some insurance companies don't even 
it won't even entertain a claim notification until you can prove that you've got that chip. And all of those things are not in our product. We don't have a product that's full of exclusions and conditions. And every time we find that there's a, a real thing that's causing um, declinitures, then we look to try and change that from a process point of view or a product point of view. Yeah. So it's very refreshing. That's really interesting. So you're so you know we've all done the TCF questionnaires where every month where it's and it's a little bit of a of a, a tick boxing exercise, isn't it? But you're saying that bought by many you actually look at the reasons why you turn down claims and then try and influence the policy so that you don't have to do it in the future yeah that's right i think um like a lot of i mean we do have a pre-existing uh, product at bought by many but there are still people who buy standard products and they have pre-existing conditions and um, that tends to be an area that does create declines um, probably more so with a lot of other pet companies. So we do try and make sure customers are buying the right product for their pre-existing and understand exactly what it was that was pre-existing and whether it's exactly the same issue or whether actually it's something that's generated from it. So, uh, yeah, we do so look at them. I guess um, you must be making headway there as well because, um, again, awards seem to be coming thick and fast, but you were voted the most trusted insurer in your in your field and I guess trust in pet insurance is absolutely critical because actually pets are our absolute I mean when we have pet they are our, uh, a member of the family it's like insuring the children so mm -hmm. so probably the emotive tie to a pet is is greater than it is with any other personal lines product um, that that building trust thing it must be so crucial how what what was it that FIFO recognized what what, what got you that award do you think yeah, I think um, a lot of customers struggle with trust from insurance companies. And in um, PET, it's, you know, we have to be in that place where customers trust us. You know, motor, everybody has to get motor insurance. Household people think it's quite sensible. But PET can be, you know, bottom of the list when it comes to insurance sometimes. So it has to be a company that customers trust. Yeah. So it is important for us to try um, and get that trust level. I mentioned before about um, exclusions and conditions. And that seems to be when you look um, at customer feedback about insurance, it is all about insurance is trying to get out of everything with small print and small width. And I think um, you look at the bought by many products and they're not like that. Um, and it does help us to deliver something that customers actually want, where there's a trust involvement in it. And I think um, <laughs> from a, a customer point of view, if you, um, if you have a product that really helps customers and delivers what a customer needs, then it, it's sort of really, it's much easier to have an excellent claim service. Yeah. You, get a pro, you get a really poor product, you can have an okay claim service, but you're never going to run away with the awards and excellent ratings. And that's why it's really important that um, for a, a trust thing, and for a product thing, that the product teams and claims teams really work closely together. You know, so I talked about declines. So we look at that and we work with the product team to try and build a product that actually does suit um, what customers are after. And I think that sort of helps really, because we don't, we really don't try and wriggle out of claims because of uh, exclusions and conditions. We do try to find ways of paying claims and helping customers as much as we possibly can. Um, so I think listening and learning to customers helps us build that product that means customers can actually trust that you will be there for them to deliver that product promised, you know, when it comes to claim stage. Completely. Um, I guess um, the, 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 the one of the things that looking through what you guys do and, and, and looking through the product and as a customer, I was quite intrigued about from a claims perspective was actually what, what, what the overriding impression I got was that claims wasn't a necessary evil at the end of the, at the end of the process claims was absolutely at the heart of the proposition. And it, I guess you talking about um, you influencing the product really is, it shows how that works at a practical perspective and how it brings it all into one nice virtuous circle. But one of the things that I really was intrigued by was the, the, the thing that you have going on with the first pet uh, line, because that, yeah. that really that really felt interesting in the sense that genuinely giving some giving customers a, a value or a solution which would which would save them money outside, not only of their uh, uh, their insurance, but save you money, but also could, could was huge peace of mind. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? 
um, with First Bet. Yes. Yeah. So First Bet um, is a digital consultation thing, um, and it's something that's open to all of our customers. And uh, we started using First Bet as our supplier. Summer 19, we started using them, actually. It was one of the first out in the market. And um, First Bet is a um, practical solution and a really quick solution for customers. So if they see something, they're worried about the pet, might not absolutely be thinking, yeah, it's definitely I need to go and see a vet, but they can ring First Bet and they'll get a, an appointment with a vet to be a digital appointment within 20 or 30 minutes. So the customer actually can quickly get in touch and have a conversation with the vet about um, any of the worries, really. And that, uh, it, I think probably um, others since then have followed us. And um, I've also got digital um, type consultations, but they're not all with vets. And I think customers, uh, they trust the vets. I mean, the vet nurses do a fantastic job and some of these other processes are really good. But I think from a customer trust point of view, they want to talk to a vet. They want help from a vet. Um, so, yeah, that has really shown some excellent customer feedback from it and some uh, pretty good consequences, I think, from a customer and to bought by many because um, not only does it help the customer, they don't have to go out and see a vet in the middle of the night in an emergency or something like that. So that gives you a really good customer journey. And from a bought by many point of view, we have found that it has reduced claim volumes. So I was just um, about to say that, I mean, the classic scenario would be that some, a pet had something seriously wrong with it. And presumably if you catch it early, then it's cheaper to treat um, as with any claims. That's about, is that the truth? Is that the true with pet claims as with any other? The earlier you get them, the quicker you settle them, the cheaper yeah. they are? Yeah, it can be. Um, it very much depends what it is by the time uh, they actually do get to see a vet face to face. And I, I think probably you look back and everybody uh, being in lockdown and surgeries closing, um, we saw a, a huge increase oh. in, in the use of first vet. Um, and any customer uh, of ours can use a first vet appointment. And there's no, there's no limit to it. You can go you know, um, every other week if you really need to, but it, it just helps you um, helps you understand your pet a little bit better. And there's another uh, point that we've tried to do with it. Um, we've sort of brought it together with the whole pet well-being thing. So obviously, you know, we want our pets to be healthy um, and we want our customers to feel like they can keep their pets healthy. And we have a few things that we're um, starting to work with. We're introducing first aid courses for pets. So customers can go through a first aid course for um, their pets. It's all written um, by our BBM vet. So it's all, uh, it's all perfect and the requirements are met with it. But customers can go through a first aid course and understand so much more about the pet. Also doing um, little vet boxes, which are um, a well-being box, really, just to help with a, a, a specific breed or something, and you can get fee and worm, flea and worming things from it. So we're trying to do a whole package so you can look at customers from, from um, the beginning, even before they think there's an illness there. So we're trying to help the pet be healthy. Um, wow. And so it helps both customers and insurers, obviously. <laughs> and that, that kind of prevention rather than cure thing as well is that really resonates. It, actually, it resonates with all, all lines of personal lines insurance now. But 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 you can. You, it's kind of it's probably a bit more emotional, a bit a, a bit 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 more um, uh, real when you're talking about preventing illness to a pet. So that that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned COVID there. Um, I, I think probably anyone who sort of follows sort of lives in a village or town and sees the amount of dogs being walked around knows that that knows that in covid there's been a huge increase in people buying pets um uh has, has there been any sort of discernible impact on on sort of your your wider business or your or your claims solution in terms of covid yeah i'm not sure about claims but from a policy point of view most definitely we are seeing um a lot more younger animals. So there's a um, there's a lot of kittens and a lot of puppies. So right. from that point of view, it has gone up. Um, there's also um, a some insured type thing because for the, uh, um, the value of puppies now has yeah. uh, has increased dramatically, really. But it hasn't had a massive problem from a claims point of view. Um, 
I think we, BBM, we, um, we very quickly moved to all working from home. All our technology was there in place. In fact, we moved to work from home before we officially had to. Um, and so we did that. We had first vet in place for that. And um, we, our suppliers also moved quite quickly to work from home. So it, it worked quite well for us. I think initially you saw a reducing frequency of claims through quote, COVID. There were more first vet consultations, yeah. but actual claims uh, did reduce quite dramatically. But, you know, customers couldn't go and see their vets. So it would have been a, a big concern for them, really. Without first vet, they would have struggled. And, 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 and one last question for me. It, bought by many doesn't mention pet insurance. Uh, uh, is there going to be, is there going to, are, you, is it, are we going to see more bought by many products coming along the, in, in, the, in the future? Or, or are we saying to pet insurance? Are you not allowed to say? <laughs> <laughs> we understand pet insurance and it's our skill. It, I think we are actually uh, managing it really well and being innovative and staying ahead. So um, I think we're sticking with pet for a, a short while. Right. Listen, that Christine, that's been absolutely fantastic. I, I think it's, it's really reinforced the fact that smart claims handling is generic it's not there's no no one has the uh, no one has the patent on on smart claims handling in motor or home i think some really interesting stuff that you're doing on prevention and and looking after lifestyle um not just damage limitation after a claims happened i think it's really interesting and exciting and and having never worked with pet claims before but but having done a lot of motor and home i think there's 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 a lot there's a lot we can learn from you guys so we certainly like to hear more from you as, as, as the years go on. Um, that's been an absolute pleasure and a real education. Thank you so much for your time, Christine. Thank you very much.